So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to install a Hive thermostat into a Valent Ecotech Pro. Now, I originally installed a Hive mini thermostat into the Water 2000 in my previous video, but that was hubless. So this one, I'm going to go through how to wire everything, plus how to set up the hub as well. So it's all ready to go on your phone. So once you remove the packaging, the red part of the box will pull away from the blue part and then you'll gain access to what's inside. So in the packaging, they give you a thermostat, receiver, and then the hub. Now I'd recommend setting the hub up first. The reason I recommend setting the hub up first is it takes about 15 to 20 minutes to update and the app will not let you connect to the hub until it's updated. So in that 15 minutes, while it's setting up, you can then do your wiring. I found it's the most efficient way to do it. So once you've downloaded the Hive app, this is what it looks like. So we're gonna click the button at the bottom that says create account. Then it will ask you where you're located. For me, it'll be the UK. Then it will ask you for all your personal information. Once you've filled it all out, there'll be a button at the bottom that says register. Once you click register, they'll then turn the email to your email address. On that email, click activate your account and then it will take you to the website for you to enter in a password. Once you've typed in your password, click activate account. You then need to go to the Hive app and type in the email and password you just chose and log in. You're then going to select Hive Active Heating, which is at the top. Hive Hub at the bottom. Click Start. Click OK. Click Done. And then you're just going to leave it on this screen. You're then going to take your hub out of the box, plug it in, plug it into the Ethernet box, and then you're going to set it up so then this green light starts flashing, and that means it's updating. Then give it 15 to 20 minutes. In the meantime, while that's updating, we're now gonna set up our receiver. So two screws at the bottom, once you loosen them, you'll then be able to separate the receiver from the base. We're then gonna go to the boiler, turn the power off, do our safe isolation so we can work on the boiler. We're then gonna open up the front case. In terms of this valent, we've got one screw and then two pins we need to push in. The case will then pull forward and then slide up. Then we just need to undo the tabs around the PCB case so we can gain access to the PCB. So if you currently have no thermostat, you have your normal live neutral earth on the right and then you will have a little cable in between RT. We're going to loosen these two screws and remove the link in RT. If you already have a thermostat, you might have two cables going here from the old thermostat or you might have cables going into the purple RT in the right Either way, remove it. We're then going to feed a new cable into the boiler for our new receiver. So we're going to cut a hole in one of these rubber cones here. However, when you cut a hole in it, it's really important you cut a small hole. So then when you feed the cable through, the rubber seal is tight around the cable because we want to keep the boiler room sealed. We're then going to feed the cable through these plastic holes here. But if you don't have a hole, you have one of these plastic cones. If you have one of them, just use cutters. You can cut them off and then you'll then be able to feed your cable through the hole. And then we just need to strip off the end of the cable. Now I use my cool little Nipex stripper. Um, <laughs> I don't know what the actual name is, but I'll try to leave a link in the description below. We're then gonna strip each individual cable so we can get ready to put into the PCB. Now in terms of how you're gonna wire it, you're gonna put the gray in RT, the brown in live, black in neutral, and then the yellow and green one in earth. So you will need a four core cable. We're then gonna loosen these four screws so we can put our cables in. So that's RT all done now. We're just gonna quickly put some brown tape around that gray cable to show that it's gonna be live as it is our switch cable. We're then gonna put the brown cable in with the existing brown cable and then tighten it up. And then you can just give it a pull, make sure it's not going nowhere. We're then gonna do the same with our black cable, put it into the neutral and tighten it up. And then the last one at the boiler is our earth. So now that's everything done inside the boiler. We got our switch cable, our live, our neutral, our earth. We're then just gonna tighten the clamps down to make sure the cable doesn't move anywhere. We can then put the PCB case back on, 
shut the panel and then put the case back on the boiler as well because now we need to do the wiring into the receiver. So in terms of wiring the receiver, really easy. You can see we've got our neutral, our live. We're then gonna put a link between live and one and then our gray cable will go to three and then we're also gonna put the earth in at the bottom right. So the first thing I always do is measure how much I need to strip off and then strip that off. I'll then measure how much I need to strip off for each individual cable. That's all done, we can now start putting them in. Doing it in one hand is a little bit tricky, but you can see I've done a neutral already, putting the live in, and you can see it goes in between the two gold plates, and then we can tighten it down. So for that live cable, I always recommend putting it to the left of the screw, because we also need to do the link. So I'll do the link to the right of the screw, and then I'll put the other side of that link cable into number one. We're then gonna put our gray switch cable into number three. So just tightening it up and again, brown tape on the gray cable. So you can see the earth cable was a little bit long. So I'm just gonna cut it down, strip it again, and then tighten it up. And then to give it everything a pull, make sure nothing's gonna come out. And then lastly, you just need to cut a small hole in the tabs so the cable can fit in. You can then mount the receiver to the wall. I'm just doing this as a demonstration, so I'm just gonna leave mine loose. When you're done, just hook the receiver onto the base, tighten the two screws, and that's all the wiring done. So by the time you've done all of that, it's probably been around 15-ish minutes, so go to the hub, type in the code on the back of the hub into the app, and it should let you connect. If it's not letting you connect, it just means it's still updating, give it a little bit longer, come back to it, and then you should be good. We're then gonna click on Hive Active Heating, click Start, and just before we click Find Thermostat, we're just gonna turn on the receiver and also put the batteries into the thermostat. So I haven't pushed the batteries in, I'm first just going to turn on the power to the boiler and receiver. You should then get a double flashing orange light. When you get that, we're then going to pop in the batteries. The thermostat will now say searching, so we're going to leave those two and then we're also going to go onto the app and click on find thermostat. This is then the screen you'll get while everything's trying to find each other, but what I've done is I've recorded everything side by side so you can see the process. So right now everything's still searching, it's searching on the thermostat, it's searching on the phone and it's also a double flashing orange. When it's all done, this is what it'll look like. It will say pairing, you'll get a green light and then it'll all automatically pair together. Sometimes the app does take a little bit longer than the thermostat and the receiver. Again, just be patient, it shouldn't take too long. When it's all done, you should be able to see the continue button. So there it is, the app's finished finding it. We're gonna click continue. I don't know why, but it showed up as thermostat two on my phone. I'm just gonna change it to thermostat one so it didn't bug me. Then gonna click finish. And then that is the app fully set up. So to get out of the tour that Hive are trying to give you on the thermostat, just click that back button and that should take you to the main menu. So to turn the heating on, we're just going to rotate that dial clockwise. We're going to turn the target temperature above the current room temperature, which is the one that's shown on the right. Click that button in, and then you'll see the green light on the receiver, and then the boiler should fire up. So if we give it maybe half a minute, we should see the fire symbol come up on this valent. And there it is, boilers all fired up. Now to turn the heating off, we're gonna rotate that dial anti-clockwise. So turn the target temperature below the current room temperature and it should turn off. You then see the green light now flashing. That means it's now about to turn off. Now, if you wanna do on the app, very similar. You might get a Hive Heating Plus thing come up, but you can just skip that, you don't have to pay for it. 
we're going to turn the target temperature above the current room temperature, which is shown at the top left there, you see the 18.7. So if we set it to 22 degrees, for example, again, green circle, and if you give it about half a minute, the boiler should fire up. To turn it off, again, same thing, just turn the temperature below the current room temperature and it will turn off. And that is it. That is how you wire the receiver to the boiler, set up the thermostat, set up the app and also set up the hub. Now, I would recommend doing it in the exact same order that I've done it. Reason being, I remember the first time I tried setting up a hive last year, it was um it was fun because the instructions weren't the clearest and if you do things in a different order it's not always the easiest so do it in the exact same order and you should be all good if you get stuck on anything just let me know in the comments below I'm more than happy to help hope you enjoyed if you did then i'll see you in the next video